Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be seeing this uh, Milan Weekly special once again. Of course, it. Uh, I have the great pleasure from uh, Presidente Marcello to do all the interviews that happen either at breakfast time or at lunchtime in your country. If it's breakfast time, for sure you're enjoying a little espressino and a little cornetto. If it's lunchtime, you guys all know un bello panino with a little bit of capigollo and a little bit of soppressata and uh, two or three olives, and we're all set for that. I know you guys are working. I have a really, really uh, beautiful and, and, and exciting interview that I'm going to be doing today, and it's very near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking with Julia Simic, from uh, AC Milan, their women's team. And guys, you all know, you if you follow me on social media, this is very near and dear to my heart because I do have a young daughter that loves AC Milan and she is going to be happy when, I'm, when I show her that I spoke to someone from AC Milan's women's team. I'm going to bring in Julia for you guys. Julia, welcome to Milan Weekly Podcast, our special interview with yourself. How are you today? Hello, everyone. First of all, thanks for having me. I hope we're making your little daughter happy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. And I'm really, I'm really good. Thank you so much. I hope you're good, too. <laughs> thank you. And Julia, I, I would like to, uh, to say thank you on behalf of everybody at Milan Weekly Podcast. I do do the show with uh, Vince, who is my uh, co-host. He works during the day. I work too, believe it or not. So uh, I'll be uh, I'll be the one uh, who's lucky enough to interview you, and of course, uh, uh, Presidente and uh, AC Milan, the women's team, for giving us this opportunity to to talk to you. I know you're very very busy, and uh, I want to get straight to it. Uh, I want you to tell people who is Julia Simic and and a little bit of your background, please. Um. So yeah, my name is Julia. I'm 31 years old. I feel a lot younger, <laughs> but I'm already 31, so I don't know how this happened. I'm originally from Germany. Uh, I played more than, yeah, let's say 14 years in, in Germany. Then I played two years in, in London, the last two years before I came this summer to AC Milan. And now I'm, I'm here playing football for AC Milan in Italy. And I'm, yeah, really excited and happy and hope for many um, good memories to come. <laughs> Nice and, and and again a beautiful trek and that's your that's your professional your professional uh, CV for for everybody uh, out there listening to Milan Weekly podcast. But uh, let's you know in Canada I don't know if you know uh, women's soccer is very very popular. Our national team uh, does tremendous things uh, and you know uh, I see it here in the community as well. Right, so we're from Montreal. Uh, and, and we see that the women's soccer is booming. I have friends uh, that uh, their daughters play, and, and you see that the game is changing. What got you to start playing soccer when you were uh, young? I'm going to keep you as young because 31 is very young. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> not in the football business, though. I'm one of the eight oldest in the team, but that's okay. Uh, 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 that's... You could tell them to look to the, the men's side. We have a 39-year-old that's doing not too bad. Exactly. That's true. That's a good comparison. No, um, I think like my access to football uh, was my older brother. So I have an older brother and I think a lot of girls who start to play football start playing with their brothers or with their dads. So my dad is also into football and obviously that, that helped. But at the same time, it could have been exactly the same way without my brother, for example. If my brother would have done something else, I could have still have my passion for football. So I think as a kid, you just do what you love, you know. You don't think of playing football might be more for boys than for girls. You just, if there's a ball and you enjoy it, to kick it, even as a girl, I think you just do it without thinking even further and what it gets to one day, for example. So um, that's just a question I think that gets asked a lot of girls. How do you get into football? And I always think, yeah, because I loved it so much since, I'm, since I was five, six years old. And this is basically where... Well, when I started to play uh, mostly in in parks and uh, we call it cages uh, in yeah little football areas basically on little football pitches and then I started to play in a team as well with seven years old and always with the boys until I was 16 and I think that helped obviously a lot as well 
back then, so in my young days, um, there was also not really a lot of women's football or infrastructure for, for girls to play football. So also because of this, I had to play with boys. But when I think back, I always enjoyed a lot to play with boys. It was so competitive. And yeah, it was just like a really tough fight. Every day you had to prove yourself. And I think at the end, it, it, it pays out basically because, or pays off because you, you get stronger, obviously, by having these fights every day. And especially against boys who are a bit more physical and a bit more competitive sometimes. And for me, that was always a great, yeah, great experience. Yeah, and it's funny you say that it's, it's enjoying. I remember when I was uh, younger <laughs> uh, playing <laughs> soccer and we would have to mix, mix it up, right? There would always be, never me because you could see me. I'm not the good looking skinny guy, right? But there was always the good looking skinny guy that when we mix the teams, he would want to like impress the girls that were mixing <laughs> in the team. And he would try to do the tricks and he tried to, and I was looking at him, I was like, what are you doing? Why would you do this? And then when the girl would actually, you know, there was a girls that are fantastic in soccer would actually tackle him and he would get up from that tackle. He was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. You know? So yeah. like that, that, that's, that's what I remember when I was young and we were used to mix the teams and you know, It's funny that you brought that. At, we we started at at Julia at at a young age, you know. But you know, just uh, again reading up on you and 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 going through your career path, you played your whole uh, a good portion of your career in your homeland of Germany, and then you made a switch. You made a switch to West Ham, in London. So, what prompted you? Like, what was that that switch that flicked in, in in Julia's head that said, you know what, I need to move away from Germany? I think because it was always in me. I always wanted to see something else, and even better if you can use your profession basically to see a little bit more from the world. I think a lot of players will always stay for their whole career in this one country or in their own country, but I always had this drive in me that I wanted to see more from the world than just my country basically and wanted to experience other fo football cu cultures other cultures in terms of society another language so um that was always a bit in in me anyway so when this offer came um to go to england at this time when the league just turned into a professional league and the facilities were great and all the girls <clears throat> wanted to go to england at this time because it was just such a big thing now a lot of media is in in the english league and it was just a good a good move to make it this time i was not in the focus for the national team in germany anymore so i was also ready to go and yeah to enjoy football a little bit with still com on a competitive side but a little bit less st stress in terms of you want to get the call up for the national team and you have to be there and in the spotlight i just wanted to enjoy football and experience something else and that's also what brought me here to to milan when that offer came obviously i was Yeah, I was just excited to, again, experience another culture of football and see how, how football goes here in Italy. Amazing. And, you know, I asked that, you know, we asked that question because it's always curious to me. For, you know, in Europe, it's very easy to travel, right? So uh, Germany, England, not that far away. We, I, look at, I look at our local sport and the women here, they have a, they have a short trek to university in the, in the States they have a very long trek to Europe, right? It's, it's not an easy travel, right? For you, was it, uh, was, it, uh, was it very easy, the transition? Were you a bit homesick or uh, just, you know, just, just the change? Was it, a, if you could give some advice to a young girl that has to do that, make that move, what would it be? What would be the hardest part? I think obviously, yes, it's always hard to leave home in a certain way, right? I was 16 when I, moved out from home, like when I went to Bayern Munich, that was my first professional team in, in Germany. So this was with 16, then I played for the women. And I think that was the hardest step for me from coming from the under 16 boys and behaving like a under 16 boy as well. And being from the mindset, like still a kid. And then you all of a sudden you play with adults and you train like professionals and you have a professional surrounding around you. And all that was a, was a big step. I think then when I traveled a bit more, that was still in Germany, but I was always far from home, basically. The step to England wasn't that hard anymore because I already knew that situation, not being directly next to home. So let's say when I played for Wolfsburg, that was six hours from where I'm from in Germany. So 
playing in London was actually a bit uh, closer in terms of traveling. So you only had to fly one and a half hour and you would be there. So my dad, my family, they would always come and visit or I could go home and visit them because as you said, it's easy to travel in, in yeah. Europe, you know, so it's, it's not a big thing. But yeah, obviously, when you leave everyone behind and sometimes you have to, I would say, just make these sacrifices um, to be at that level and to leave home and leave friends behind and all your like your comfort zone a little bit just to compete on the highest level but I think at this time now when you have FaceTime when you have all these devices where you can see your family basically also through the phone and um, that makes it a little bit easier and you still have a lot of yeah a lot of opportunities to to see each other I would say exactly which was not the case even if we think maybe five, if we go as back as five years ago, it's not it's not as easy, right? So True. we we talked about your switch from Germany to England, and I, I can I'm not going to speak for you there, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't for the food. But uh, uh, <laughs> if we in August you signed for Milan, you know, and that's near and dear to my heart. I wear this 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 crest with with great pride. Uh, the people in Italy might not know, but we're we're trying to we're trying to open their eyes up that in here in Canada, especially in Montreal, we bleed red and black just like everybody there in in Milano. <laughs> so your switch to your switch to Milan in August, besides the food, which is far better than England, what attracted <laughs> you to AC Milan, and and what what said, hey, you know what, this is another new adventure that I want to take on, and another team that I want to play for. Yeah, first of all, I know you Italians are really proud of your food, but I would say you have every right to be proud because it's amazing, <laughs> first of all. But yeah, obviously when I went to Milan, that was more, I was already not the youngest anymore and I knew I have maybe just a short Okay, I'm going to time out. I'm going to time out over here. I, I, am, I, agree. I, I don't want you to say that you're not the youngest anymore. <laughs> no, We're not about age here. <laughs> We're not about age anymore. <laughs> Just from what my body, I think, is able to give. So I knew I'm in my winter of the career and that's perfectly fine. I'm not uh, desperate or something. But I still knew I'm not done yet with football and I knew I want to see something else. And obviously when the, the offer came from, from Milan, I was, of course, I know about the history of Milan and I know all the big success and all these great players. And Milan's always... I even brought my brought my brother a, a Milan shirt two years ago um, because I was sponsored by Puma and I would always bring him something and it was um, a Milan shirt. So it was always a thing like AC Milan is such a big club and I think a huge history as well in this club. And this is just a nice thing now that women's football is basically having access to even huge clubs like Milan, for example, that they open their doors to have a women's side as well in their team and give girls and women also the the chance to play for such a huge club and also make maybe their own history which can also be a thing in the future i think and we have a great team i knew the ambitions are really high the facilities are great the people who are working in the background when i get to know them i was really impressed of how professional and high the level is already in italy and then for me that that was an easy decision so i, I spoke to them i came here and looked at the facilities and then i was like of course i want to do this and came here <laughs> amazing amazing julia and uh, congratulations because it is something very very uh very very special uh, and you know what the women's game and yourself and milan i'm proud of milan uh, uh, and supporting this team and we do have a women's team and we do emphasize on the women's team myself and and the guys here at milan weekly podcast we try to follow as much as possible uh, when, when available, right? Which is something that a little bit frustrating and not not easily available to have the women's game uh, televised or see or see a game. But you know, now that you made this trek from Germany to England and now England to Italy, how was it getting used to Italy now? Which is you know, if Germany and England, I could see there's a lot of English speaking people in in, uh, in Germany, and maybe you know it's a second language for you guys in Germany. But now you're coming to Italy. Italy is a different beast in itself, right? And and uh, <laughs> and I already see everybody watching me saying, "Yeah, we can." You know, Italy is funny. We can recite all the words to our favorite song, but we have trouble <laughs> having a conversation in English. How was how was that for you? How was that experience? And and is is Italian something that you picked up? 
Um, so to be honest, at the beginning, I would say it was hard. Yeah, it was tough because I'm a really communicative person, I would say. So I live by from conversations I have. And also at the beginning when I came here, I was injured. So I was not training with the girls every day. So it took maybe a little bit longer to really get in into this team and also be a member of the team. Now that I'm playing, everything gets a lot easier because I think football at the end is one language, you know, so that makes it a lot easier to to perform and to train on the pitch together. And then all of a sudden you start to create a bit of a, let's say, another language to speak with each other, with hands and feet and the ball and with Mr. and another one who might come and translate. That's It's an easy, easy thing on the pitch, I would say. It's more outside of the pitch. We are starting to having Italian lessons now. Obviously, that helps. I think that's for us foreigners, it's a good thing that we know we have to learn the language. Otherwise, we will struggle to really speak because not a lot of Italian really speak perfect English. I think that's that's something I knew before as well that I might struggle a bit, but actually you really have to learn Italian. I knew a little bit of Spanish before I came here. So from day one, basically, I started to speak even if it didn't make any sense what I said, but people would try to understand and help me. And we were figuring out what I really mean with this sentence. But I think the Italians are really open, communicative. And then this obviously helps. And I think if you have an open open mind to to the people, it will work. But yeah, obviously, the, sometimes there's a little language barrier still. <laughs> yeah, And like I told you at the beginning, you talk with your hands, you can direct them yes. to wherever you want to go, and they will respond. Espressos like this, panino, you go like this, you can eat yes. panino. It's you know, you're gonna you're gonna get something. You're like, what are you doing? Why did you do that? But this, you know, this could also mean, hey, how are you? Or hey, what are you doing? Right? So uh, I want to talk a little bit about your number. Your number is 91. It's yeah. uh it's it's one of those numbers that they when you see it on the field, whoa, 91. There has to be there has to be something on it. Now, the way I see it, and I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I remember, and I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk a little bit about our our cousins in the in in Milan. We're not going to name them on the show, but our cousins that wear blue and black instead of red and black. See, so <laughs> I remember when Zamarano and Ronaldo were in at Inter together. They were angry because. Ronaldo, the real Ronaldo, wanted number nine, and Zamorano had number nine. And he had to change his number to one plus eight, so to make nine. Now, is that the same thing for you? You wanted <laughs> ten, and you couldn't get you couldn't get it? Or tell me a bit about the number. I think you're the first one who figured it out by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so well done. Great applause for you. It's exactly this. So I was thinking, okay, what number? can I wear apart from the 10 because I used to have the number 10 everywhere basically and then I came here and they came a bit later than the other girls they were already in training so the numbers were gone the good numbers were gone right <laughs> um and then I don't have this one number like that always brings me luck or something so I was thinking okay what makes sense then I thought of having my birthday like born in 89 89 was gone already and then I was okay what makes 10 normally you would choose uh, one and nine, like 19, uh, it was gone uh, as well. So then I took 91. And especially in Italy, as I know Italy, there's, there are a lot of players who wear really high numbers. So it's a bit common in Italy to wear high numbers. So 91, yeah, sounds a little bit or looks a little bit exotic, but it for now it works quite well. It feels a little bit different than the 10, but it's okay. <laughs> No, no way. problem. For 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 me, I was never a numbers guy. But uh, you know, when you see a number, there's always a story behind it, and it and it's and it's and I, I'm gonna say I guessed. I I would think that would be the common thing that you would try to add up to something. Some people have again a birthday, like you said. Uh, the number is fine. The jersey's fine. We talked a little bit about our cousins. Derbies are always special. Um, the, the the derby della madonnina also in the women's game something special a calendar marker for men women children whoever whoever supports milan or inter talk to us about the derby and talk to us about that experience it was my first derby obviously here uh, i know there's a big rivalry uh, between the uh, blue ones and the uh, red ones even like when i <laughs> my uh, 
pizza restaurant near, near my house they all enter so when i come like inter fans so when i come there i always have to i can't wear my ac milan mask oh no 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 you cannot <laughs> no, be eating wearing... you okay. cannot be eating pizza at an interista pizzeria to be honest, the, we, it's only the guy who's making the pizza who's an interfan. That's the, the worst guy. person. That's the worst person, Julia. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to care for you. <laughs> Things need I'm to sorry change. For this. We're gonna make a call, we're gonna change that pizza yolo. <laughs> okay, I didn't notice that I can't eat it, but then I have this in my mind from now on. <laughs> but no, obviously I can I can feel it during the week already. All the, the players they were really focused and switched on, and you could just feel it's a it's a big thing. It means a lot for the club to play. Uh, even if this like derby doesn't exist for too long in women's football, you know, there's a huge history in men's football and you start to feel exactly the same when you play against them. And luckily or fortunately, we won uh, and we won, I think, really deserved and 4-1 is a really clear result. So we were really happy. I think the team was never more happy after a win <laughs> than after this one. Uh, so it, it was a good day, a really good day. I couldn't play at this game, but... Um, it was, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot to watch because the emotions were just really, um, yeah, topping. <laughs> yeah, so and unfortunately with the situation of the pandemic there for us here, uh, I'll give you just a context of what happens. As you know, we have Milan Club Montreal and we get together and we try to, you know, here it's a little bit more peaceful. We can yeah. get together with Interisti. We, I have some Interisti friends. And you know what? We watch the game, and it's and it's 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 a week's worth of 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 you know we we trash talk them, they trash talk me. Um, we continue to watch, you know, and and we sit down and we watch the game, and and you know it's something special because uh, two teams in one city so close so close together, it, 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 it's it's only normal. It's going to create a rivalry, and and you know what? I'm happy and proud for both Milan teams that it's become a civilized rivalry. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's not too many, uh, there's not too many uh, the violent acts. Uh, yeah. You know, we keep everything in control. It's a respect. It's a mutual respect between the two clubs. And, and you know what? That shows a lot of class. A lot of people see and and uh, and uh, and judge a derby by how violent and how uh, how aggressive it is. For me, I think the Derby della Madonnina has become a staple point of of the derbies throughout throughout Italy and the world because you know. It's not violent anymore. Do we like each other? No. But do we respect each other on the field? Absolutely, right? So yeah. I will never cheer for Inter. Uh, hopefully my kids will never cheer for Inter because I don't <laughs> know how I'll be able to deal with that. But you know what? I respect them and respect what they do. But in the end, it's it's the result on the field that counts. And, and Milan's victory is what counts for me, right? So Definitely, I agree. And at the now, moment, Milan is uh, Rossonero, no? <laughs> yes, yes. Milan, il derby e Rossonero. Exactly, for yeah. sure. Completely. Women and men. So exactly. th that's beautiful. Uh, let's talk a bit about the women's team and your, and your, and your, uh, your teammates. Uh, the, the team itself, they're doing very well right now uh, in the standings. And, the, the, you know, we, we've got a lot of positive results for this w Milan's women's team. What is what is the end goal? Like right now, uh, what is the end goal? What is the realistic goal for the women's team right now? I think it's always a bit hard to say we want to have this and this and this. Of course, like you play football to win something, right? Everyone does. And when you're on the second place in the table, it's, I would say, a realistic thing to aim for, to win something. Like at the moment, we are, we are doing good in every competition. So far, we won a lot of games. We, it starts to connect. Like what, from my perspective, as to, as long as I am here, I would say, at the beginning, we we maybe needed a little bit of time to find each other. And now, the longer we play together, the better we understand Mister's philosophy. The better the Italians understand the foreigners, and the other way around. And in between, I think it starts to create a really good team spirit. And especially, I think winning is always the best team bonding itself. So if you win games, you just start to connect, right? And I think that's the best way to continue. We have two more games in, in, in this in this year, in like in the last um, bit of the first first leg of the season. And all we want to do is winning the two two games now and then have a little Christmas break and then attack again. 
and get as many wins as possible. And I think with this with this team, we got another really really good player from Spain now, uh, Vero Buquet, who helps us a lot. I think, and it just shows also that big players like her coming in into Italy in the league to, in Italy and. Yeah, just playing for such a big club and shows the attraction also of Milan, you know, that players want to play for, for Milan and want to play in Italy. So I think, to be honest, everything is possible, but I think we, we should rather speak on the pitch than outside. And I think so far we're doing really good and it can, can be, a, yeah, basically everything is possible in this season. Yeah, so that was that was a, a loaded question. Just because you know, it's important that people hear it from you know yourself and you play. They can hear it from me. Uh, I'm just uh, you know uh, a pretty good looking guy who, who who loves to do a podcast and like loves to talk to people about Milan. But you know, when it comes from you, and I'm an advocate of that, is that you need to you need to manage your expectations, right? You, you would love to win everything. We would yeah. love to win the Champions League, the Coppa Italia, the UEFA Champions League. But in reality, you know, you you professional players are put through a humongous stress. You know, a lot of games, training, a different lifestyle. You know, it, it, things happen at different times, right? And yeah. in any in any win, I would be lying to everybody if I would say, you know what? There's not there's not a portion of luck or a portion of uh, of um, uh, of just you know. Uh, things lining up correctly for you guys to win right so you know in, in the standings obviously you see where you're at right uh, at uh, at uh, christmas time uh, you'll see x number of points away from uh, from the top spot that's an attainable goal you know and it's important for everybody to understand that these are all attainable goals if everything goes right and we're in a very specific time right where not only is it demanding on new players physically but also mentally because hey there's a pandemic going on and you need to be very, you need to be wary about your safety. Right. So, uh, and you know what? And I'm so happy that you said that because it proved my point to everybody. Again, it's just manage your expectations and, you know, and the team will, will come together and get those results. Julia, I know, I know you're very busy. I want to take just some time for some rapid fire questions. We okay? do this. <laughs> just some fast questions that, you know what? Hey, you give me a one-word answer. You don't have to explain yourself, okay? Yeah. <laughs> My first question to you would be, how long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Five minutes. I'm really quick in the morning. <laughs> when, you get ready for, when, you, when you get ready for game time, how long does it take you to get ready? Longer. <laughs> like I'm, I'm definitely doing something before a game. I have my, of my routine. You always do the same. You have a little shower and then you get ready. So I would say for a game, it's maybe 15, 20 minutes. Still not too long. <laughs> okay. So for game time, we all see the professional athletes with their fantastic headphones. When Julia <laughs> has her headphones on, what is Julia listening to? What's her favorite song? This is something I can't say. I love music. I love every kind of music. I listen basically to everything. I also listen to Italian singers in the past, like for example, Eros Ramazzotti would be a big thing in, in Germany. And um, basically it's everything a little bit. It's pop, it's it's also a bit R and B, I would say. So Alicia Keys, for example, I love that there are a lot of a lot of good songs, I would say. <laughs> If Julia wouldn't be playing football, what's your, what's, what's your next favorite sport? Um, I love tennis. Yeah, I love tennis. I, I used to play tennis as well when I was even smaller than I am now, but younger. <laughs> and um, at one point you made your decision. I made my decision for football, but yeah, I always play tennis as well. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not gonna say I, I, I envisioned you saying tennis, but tennis is very popular, and especially Germany, Steffi Graf. I would imagine that you would, you, you would have chose tennis, right? I yeah. myself think of myself as a round Andre Agassi, so I play <laughs> tennis too as well when I can find a partner. So <laughs> if you're ever in Montreal or if I ever come to, you know, I match. will, I will not challenge you in soccer, but I will challenge you in tennis. Perfect deal. <laughs> deal. If Julia was not, and again, was not a professional football player, what would Julia be doing? What would be your other interest or another job that you would like to do? To be honest, 
I love football so much and football always played a huge role in my love, life. So I would say I even I studied sports science. So I was still wanted to educate myself to be even after my career to still be able to do something in football. So I might be a football coach, maybe, or might be an SNC coach or whatever. I would still love to, to work in football. <laughs> still involved in the game, scout, yes. coach, anything that has to do with that. Exactly. I would if I wouldn't be a professional fantastic podcaster, <laughs> I would do what I'm doing. <laughs> Perfect. That's fine. You found your profession. Yeah. <laughs> and your passion. It, it is a passion. It is, for me, it's a therapy session. It takes me away from my regular job and I get to speak to fantastic people like you. Uh, one food that Julia can't live without. Pasta. I yes. Like this. So okay. I, I would say from a nutrition standpoint, I'm in the right country now. <laughs> yes, you are. Finally. You're you're in carb. You're in the carb central of the world. I know. This is my signature question. If Julia sits down and you have a plate of pasta and the available pasta for you is penne, you know what penne is? Yes, are? of course. Okay, would you choose penne lisce or penne rigate? The one with the little lines or no lines? Um, the one with the little lines. Yes, yes, it's yes, yes. Right? <laughs> Julia. Yes, You're gonna blow the, the internet will explode because there's no room in the world for yeah. penelice. Penelice yeah. are like little goldfish. You take okay. them and they just slither down. The exactly. sauce never stays. Yes. It's terrible. Exactly. Penne rigati should be the only rigati, penne exactly. out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's even on our on our boxes when you buy them, it's penne rigate. No, All the time. And penelice should just stay on the shelf. We Usually they exactly. use penelice to hold open a door or something. <laughs> Okay. I'll if you that. don't mind, if you don't mind, I have a couple of more questions because I would be very rude not to include your teammates in this interview. Yeah, let them of course, them. after they see this interview, they'll probably all want to be on with me. That's great. <laughs> but now we're talking to Julia. So with Julia, of your teammates, who likes to gossip the most? <laughs> um, that's a hard one. I think gossip, um, we have some, like, we have a little group and yeah, we speak about basically everything. <laughs> if I have to, if it's not me, I would say, I would say it's Christy Grimshaw and Natasha Dowie. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Of, you know, everybody who plays football, they have aspirations after football of the, of your teammates who thinks that they can be the next coach. I think I might have to I have to pick Vero Bouquet, the Spanish girl who just came in because you can see on the pitch she's speaking a lot, she's communicating a lot, she's directing a lot as well. To be fair, I'm a little bit like this as well. It also comes maybe a little bit with your position. So I'm a centro campista, she's as well. Um, I already coached in my past, so that's definitely a passion of me as well to one time maybe coach a team. Um, but I would. If I have to pick someone apart from me, I would pick Vero Bouquet. <laughs> Excellent. Of your teammates, who's the most superstitious? Oh, that's hard. That's hard. Um... Well, let's put it this way. I'm pretty sure you're all superstitious. <laughs> but there has to be someone who's extreme. <laughs> like, I cannot put on my left sock before my right sock. Or I tie my shoelaces a, a specific way. I think, to be honest, that's, th that's more... As I heard it, I didn't really experience it, but I heard that the Italians are really, they, if they give you something on the food table, for example, they have to put it down first um, on the table before someone else picks it up, for example, the salt or the pepper or something. So maybe I would just say it's the Italians more than the foreigners. Oh, yeah, Italians. You know what, Julia, if I tell you the superstitions that my mom has, you okay. would be floored. So I, I, I'm born in the superstitious realm. Um who is the loudest of the teammates? Uh, easy. Natasha Dowie. She's <laughs> just, it's her nature, I would say, but she's, when she speaks, it's so loud. And I, uh, to be fair, I love this. But I'm, uh, I would say I can be loud as well, but we always have a good time. When you hear noise, it's, it's always her being around or being involved as well. So it's not Natasha Dowie. Yeah. <laughs> and of, uh, of that, who is the prankster? It's her as well. 
I know she's always screaming, uh, scaring girls and <laughs> screaming at some girls who are already s scared from their personality. So it's definitely her as well. <laughs> Excellent. Julia, I want to I wanna say thank you again on behalf of really well. everybody <laughs> at the Milan Weekly Podcast. Like you see, I'm just a, a plain guy who loves talking football. And, and it was a pleasure to have you on. If I could just sign off with this, if you have any advice for young girls that are, are in the sport right now and are making that trek into, you know, making that decision to what, what their next steps are going to be, what advice would Julia, I'm going to say the professional, not Julia, if you would be talking to your sister or your sister or, or let's say your cousin or a relative, Julia, the professional, what would be your advice to these girls who who want to who want to see what's out there for them after the local the local game is over for them and they need to take a next step? I would say keep chasing your dream, basically, because it's worth it. For example, when I look back, I, I might have struggled from some injuries, and every single comeback was worth it to go through the rehab process, for example. And just playing football is such a privilege when you enjoy playing football and it's your passion. I think there's not only one way to make it happen so there are a lot of ways don't give up early like there are always other doors who, which are opening and maybe you can't see them at the moment but they they still exist and there are a lot of different ways right now that's really i think a really good time for young girls to play football because there are so many dreams they can chase they can see women's football they can see where it is like they can dream of playing in front of um a thousand spectators in full stadiums and that's something i think really important for them to also see what their goal could be and admire professional footballers female footballers i was always a fan of figo and sidan because i didn't know a lot of female footballers and i think these times changed a bit and i think that's that's a really 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 good thing to happen in women's football and i would say it's it's getting better every year so the future is really bright for women's football and yeah, just keep chasing your dream as I said before. Perfect. <laughs> Julia, again, thank you so, so much. Thank you yeah. to AC <laughs> Milan for giving us this, uh, this opportunity. Milan Weekly Podcast thanks you one million times over. <laughs> I wish you the best of success to a thank healthy so and much. happy season. If we don't speak again, you owe me a tennis match. <laughs> and happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you know, you so Buon Natale, much. however you say it in German. I wish I knew how to say it in German, but I don't. Guys, Julia from AC Milan's women team. Thank you very much, guys. And please follow us on Instagram, social media, and YouTube. And guys, buon appetito and forza Milan. <laughs> forza Milan. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Thank ciao, you. Ciao. <laughs> ciao.